Before Michael McCredden would surpass 1 million subscribers on his YouTube channel with his Before They Are Famous, After They Are Famous, Before They Are Dead, and other various series. My name is Michael McCredden and welcome to Before They Are Famous, documenting the life of Young Thug prior to fame, here for you and Before They Are Famous. His weight actually skyrocketed to the point where Fat Joe had to sit down with him and talk to him about his obesity. And when you have a man by the name of Fat Joe telling you you have a problem, well it's pretty serious. And that's really it. Like the girl was born. To a really famous family, red carpets every weekend. Yeah. Alright, that's all I got for you guys. See ya! Before Michael McCredden's videos would get retweeted by the celebs he documents, including DJ Khaled, Kendra Sunderland, Ray Schremer, and Alex Lynx. Before he would have Deadmau5 say that Michael McCredden does his homework and do collabs with other YouTubers like Furious Pete. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> really? Yeah. Before Michael McCredden got his foot in the door on YouTube, hosting Inform Overload and IO Trends, which allowed him to feel some love from Russell Brand, Dr. Phil, and Amy's Baking Company. Bruce Jenner is counting down the hours to Halloween so he can throw on a dress, carry around a purse, and not have so many people ask so many goddamn questions. Don't this seem like when you watch something like Blade Runner or some dystopian thing of like when you see a bit of telly in a film from the future, like everything's a bit, hello, we're evil now! But don't judge me, because you put yourself under a magnifying glass. Everything you put your name to, everything you say, you're, you're leaving so much for people to just work with. Before Michael McCrudden would aspire to become an actor. So what is it that we're actually looking for? Sophistication and refinement. I do it in the bathtub. I do it at the office. I do it at night. It's sexy. It's fast. So why aren't you doing it? Before Michael McCretton would meet his lifelong idol, Jim Carrey, and get to watch him in action during the filming of Dumb and Dumber 2. Meeting Jim Carrey was truthfully a lifelong goal for me. I mean, I dressed up as the guy each and every Halloween for like a decade. Later on, I would aspire to achieve other goals, like to become a host on TV stations like MTV. Hey MTV, my name is Michael McCrudden. I only have a minute, so I'm going to make this really brief. But I need to start off by letting you guys know, this is my dream job. There's nowhere else I want to be. MTV is Michael McCrudden. That's what I'm all about. Now that plan didn't exactly work out, but today I have you guys in a YouTube career, which has allowed me to reach this goal on this amazing platform, but it didn't happen overnight. In fact, I've been working in and around the entertainment industry for as long as I can remember. When the trials were over, that film could rest in peace. All that time they were being fed, treated medically. Yeah, that was me at six years old. I was such a scene stealer. You guys have long asked for it before they are famous on me, so to celebrate the one million milestone, we're gonna get that done. We try every day to make these videos as informative and fun as possible. Even if you don't care for the person we document, we still do whatever we can to keep you guys entertained. I want to thank each and every one of you, no matter how far back or recently you subscribe to this channel. Together we are doing big things and I have crazy and hilarious plans for you in the future. This is to the kids, bro! I also want to thank my team, including Matt and Azzy, also Landon, who introduced me to the wonderful world of YouTube, and my family. Actually, my mom, she spent a week gathering these home videos and family photos for this video. Yeah, she's a peach. Oh my gosh, she's around, like, chill. Like, What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting my own life and career prior to 1 million subscribers, here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now I might mess up and tell this story in the third person, but at this point in time, let's be honest, it's become a force of habit. Thank you. You love me. You really love me. <laughs> Michael McCredden was born on February 26, 1986 in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. The youngest child to immigrant parents from Ireland, Steve and Kathleen McCrudden. My father a master electrician and soccer fanatic, my mother an esthetician and a big fan of the Catholic Church. The story goes that I am the most Irish of all my three siblings because I was the only one conceived in Ireland. Yeah, it happened after a Bruce Springsteen concert, how romantic. 
Yeah, that's the song, but I was born in Canada. By the way, mom, I don't know how Jesus would feel about rock and or roll. I was the youngest of four and I quickly established for myself a reputation of being a menace and my parents couldn't find enough events, hobbies or friends to keep me busy. Michael McCrudden. If they didn't keep me occupied, I would sneak out the house and go knocking on people's doors and windows looking for some action. The neighbors once found me out past midnight looking for a spontaneous sleepover and I was just four. I loved the Ninja Turtles, I loved dinosaurs to draw and I also had a special song I would sing. It was titled Jumping Dickies. I would spend hours jumping up and down on my bed singing the only two words of the song. Jumping Dickies again and again and again and again. My parents wouldn't let me jump on the bed anymore, but I still sang the song. My brothers are 8 and 12 years older than me, and although I was a hellraiser, they treated me quite well. My oldest brother would take me to the movies where I first fell in love with film, seeing the Star Wars prequels, Star Trek, Tremors. That dude loves his sci-fi. My other brother taught me about cars, computers, video games. He also had this smoking hot girlfriend in high school who taught me about the birds and the bees. It was my sister Alana, four years my senior, that I was closest with and still am today. Also, my Aunt Gibby, I gotta give her a shout out. Me and her, well, we share the same birthday. I'm having a poop attack. <laughs> my parents enrolled me a bunch of stuff, but I spent most of my youth playing soccer, modeling, and then I did some Irish dancing. Yeah, they called me the next Michael Flatley. The Irish jig guy? His legs flail about as if independent from his body. <laughs> I'm still notorious for doing an Irish dance performance at every wedding I'm invited to. I don't get invited to that many weddings, so I mustn't be very good. In soccer, I made lifelong friends with my buddy Gareth Miller. In fact, most of my buds from when I was in elementary school are still my closest pals today. Shout outs to Ken Shepard, Shosky, Chuck, Phil, Andy, Lucas, Richard. Actually, Richard's little brother is the host of the Science Faction Show. Okay, you don't need to be so loud, Al. Let's just, um, let's just get this over with. So in school, I was always a shithead. The teachers took notice pretty early on that my gifts slide in everything arts related. In grade five, I was tested to be in the challenge program and the special needs program. They put me through a bunch of tests and they were like, let's just keep him where he is. The game changer for me was when I found performance in all through elementary school, high school, and into university, I took the stage for each and every school play there was. One year I went to school dressed as Superman in a homemade costume, and it wasn't even Halloween. It was just my birthday, and I wanted to dress up. I played the role of the cowardly lion, King Louis XIV and the Three Musketeers, a cross-dressing teacher, Iago from Othello, and Valentine from the Two Gentlemen of Verona, to name a few. Now I would roll a clip for you guys of some of these performances, but my older brother, he recorded over them to watch Tremors again on VHS. Through my childhood modeling, I had won the title of Mr. Mississauga at the age of five, which gave me some serious street cred. Throughout my youth, I was always popping up on television, appearing in flyers, and actually made some pretty good bank before I was even a teenager. My sister, she was also killing it as an Irish dancer, appearing on television as well. One St. Patrick's Day, she danced at Much Music headquarters. For those of you who don't know what that is, well, it's essentially Canada's MTV. And when I got into that studio and on TV, I knew that this was what I was gonna do when I got older. Yeah, that little guy looking for some screen time, that was me. In high school, I hung out with the jocks, although I was the guy who Irish danced and recited Shakespeare. I lost my virginity at 17 in an epic tale, which my mother walked in and beat us both up with her shoe. I'm uh, hoping to film a reenactment video of that. And Amber has been cast as the lucky gal to play the girl. She's thrilled. My grade 10 math teacher once sat me down and said, Michael McCrudden, you remind me of Peter Pan, the boy who just doesn't want to ever grow up. And she didn't mean it as a compliment. Through my childhood, Jim Carrey was everything to me. I knew all his films, every line, and would do impressions at family events. He represented to me a Canadian who came from very little, who was so talented and determined that nothing could stop him from taking over Tinseltown. I also looked up to Eminem and later Russell Brand. From looking at my mother's tabloid magazines, I took note that people love baby photos of celebrities, and I myself would be very interested in the stories of celebrities before they made it. I mean, Brad Pitt, he drove strippers in a limo. Terry Crews, he was a custodian. Eminem, he worked at a dive restaurant as a cook. These people overcame the odds, 
so there was hope for little old me. When it came time to go to university or college, I knew that all I wanted to be was my own version of Jim Carrey while hosting a television show. But that wasn't exactly one of the options in any school curriculum. So I took some time off from school to save some money and think about my future. I had also recently crashed my mom's brand new car into the house by driving it through the garage door, so I needed to pay her back. It was then I started working at Giant Carpet where I would continue to work for almost a decade and it's funny because I actually grew up to look like the company mascot. I was still modeling and at that time I was in a quasi anorexic boat, obsessed with being bone thin. I mean look at this photo. If my name wasn't there, you wouldn't have even known it was me. I think I gained 20 pounds. My high school teachers had it ingrained in my head that if I did go to university, I would be forever up Shit's Creek for not having a diploma, so I enrolled at McMaster University to study theater and film. I actually got a small scholarship my first year. Yeah, I couldn't believe it either. In my classes, I was a total outsider, the jock doing Shakespeare, but I lit it up with good grades again in the artsy stuff, not so much everything else. Outside of class, well, I was a year old than most of my peers and could buy booze, so I quickly earned the title of party guy. One night I accidentally ran through a window and cut open my arm real deep. Good thing there was a hospital on site cause the doctor, she said I could have died from blood loss. Yeah, I still have a scar. Oh higher learning. I even picked up an award titled McMaster Hammerhead for being the biggest party guy on campus. Yeah, the next three years, will they look something like my TV show Beer for Breakfast. Yeah, women in a pool, it's all we need. Over the summers I would travel to Dublin, Ireland where I worked as a bartender. The plan was for me to explore my Irish roots. Interestingly enough, I worked at Ireland's only hip hop bar. One night I got the number off a girl named Delicious, which she certainly was. Back at school I made some really good friends, shout out to Ben, Kyle and Gower, but after three years I knew I had done enough partying and enough Shakespeare in the park plays and I had taken out a bunch of loans to pay for my education. It was time for me to face the music and for me to get a job. The exact same day I finished all my classes, I remember seeing this on the news. 600 point loss. I mean this is volatility we haven't seen of course since you know 1929. Uh, so almost everything there completely wiped out. Finding a job, any kind of job was next to impossible and my theater and film degree certainly wasn't opening any doors. I was driving a delivery truck working 16 hour days, making minimum wage with no overtime. My next gig was a huge step forward. I became a production assistant on television shows being filmed in Toronto. I had made it into show business. Or so I thought. My job was to empty the garbage, fetch people Starbucks, photocopy scripts and well keep my mouth shut at all times. Again 16 hour days and you guessed it, no overtime. I actually earned more at Giant Carpet that year after high school. So I'm like what were those teachers talking about? This university degree is useless. I did this for 3 years. I remember one night shift where I could see actors filming a scene. They were my age. They were living their dreams. Meanwhile I was locked in an office emptying bits. I was so unhappy I felt lost and deterred. I actually broke down crying, which totally isn't me, but it happened. They never said winning was easy. From there I decided to do something about my situation, I didn't know how, but I was going to take a shot at my own future, the one I had always envisioned. I got headshots taken, got an acting agent, began writing scripts, all while I held my job at the studio and with some luck I began booking some acting and hosting work. Hi, I'm Stacey Englehart. And I'm Michael McCrudden. And we're here to crash Jay's party. And with a little luck, he can get real. So he can get lucky. How did she get ahead of us? Her mole was terminated. She breached the data network last week. She must have intercepted the mission plan then. I know! Not too shabby. I also began making my first ever YouTube videos. There was the Tim Hortons rap song. Double, double on me. And I'll grab a tea biscuit. Speaking through a mic. Can't wait to be drinking. Inspired by seeing the guys on Hollywood Boulevard, I decided to make my own costume character documentary. I then got my mom and Auntie Gibbs involved in the creation of One Guy, Five Grannies. I would have no doubt you can come and be baby anytime. No, no, you, you, you. They are under the name The Party Never Stops 24 7 at Facebook.com. You can also find them on Twitter at How Do I Work This Thing at Twitter.com. Thanks. All those videos you can still find them on my YouTube channel. I was also taking acting classes, and it wasn't that bad. So then, what'd she say? I have no idea. You drank a little too much. Call me tomorrow if you want. Tomorrow? I wish I was dead. 
I also began sending in host demos to MTV and Much Music as fast as I could make them. I wanted it so, so badly. One day I even wanted to tie myself to the building. I wanted it that bad. You must be crazy or something. <laughs> yeah. On top of all this, I even sent out an audition tape to get on the real world. That would have been fun. I myself have been on a date or two. I might have had one or two girlfriends. But as of now, I'm in a six month relationship and um, it's happy. Over those three years, I booked a bit of work, but nothing consistent and certainly not enough to put a debt in my ever growing student debt. So, what did I do? I opted for more schooling and enrolled in college where I studied television, writing, and producing. My thought was that if I can't get working on a show, I would just learn to make one. It was in this program I met Matt Rubel, who now works with me each and every day. Last time I hosted one of these videos, I covered Bernie Sanders, and you guys wanted to know if I have diabetes. Again, I was the jock in the class, this time amongst many intellectuals, but my ambition, desire, and dedication allowed me to earn some respect from my peers. I left that program with three television shows fully developed, which which I pitched to reputable producers, who then pitched it to broadcasters. I have a scripted sitcom about an Irish and Indian family co-owning a pub in downtown Toronto. There was Beer for Breakfast, a reality TV game show inspired by Jersey Shore and American Idol, but based on my own finesse, you know, with college culture. And not the part where I ran through the glass. We're here in Hamilton because these students think they throw the best house parties in the country. We have a lot of babes. You guys yeah. party that hard, your neighbors are leaving. I got the girlfriend, I'm getting sex for sure. I can do whatever I want. I can embarrass myself, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and finally, Irish Reno, a renovation show in which my family members were the stars as they set out to build custom bars and pubs in people's homes. My name is Alana Murphy and I'm the project manager at D3 Design and Renovation. I supply the statue and the hexa <laughs> and the saw. <laughs> Steve is a great tradesman. He likes to talk a lot, he likes to use my tools, but his work makes up for it because he does a great job at the end of the day. So after a bunch of big meetings, I waited and waited for my future to start, but none of those shows went anywhere, and there was no Constellation career either. From there, I was pretty defeated. I didn't have a dollar to my name, my longtime girlfriend, she broke up with me, I was living with my parents, deep in debt, and I essentially felt like a failure. All that hard work meant nothing to no one, and trust me, like I was applying for jobs relentlessly, no one cared. I never even got a proper interview. Maybe it's my hair. From there, I was pretty much screwed. I was relying on Craigslist for work. I was moving furniture. I was also an Uber driver before Uber was even a thing. Yeah, it was really sketchy. I also worked at a bunch of bars, but the worst part of it all was that I had lost hope. During this time, I returned to the life story of Jim Carrey. I reread many of his biographies and how he was working as a janitor alongside his family, which was basically his rock bottom. From there, he used his anger to push himself back on the stage and start out as a comedian. I began turning his life story into a pretty remarkable screenplay. What else was I gonna do? I mean, I didn't have a job or any money. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. Then one day on Craigslist, I saw a post looking for a YouTube host. That's when I met Landon and he was starting up Inform Overload. He filmed my audition tape, uploaded it to YouTube, and it got 40,000 views overnight. This one ugly mofo. It actually kind of reminds me of your dog, Ivy. No, Ivy's adorable. Your dog sucks. Well, the two of these things, they could end up in the world's ugliest dog competition. That's right. There is such thing. My name is Dave Waffle. And I'm Michael McCrudden. We're talking about the world's ugliest as dogs on the worst intro ever here for you on IO. Let's keep it. I got paid for that video. It certainly wasn't a lot, but I was in disbelief that there was actually money to be made working on YouTube. Working at Informal Overload, we started out by filming three videos a week, then 10. Within two years, I was filming 10 a day. I watched IO gain a following, surpass half a million subscribers, and we built its spin-off channel, IO Trends. All of a sudden, I was being flown out to the Dr. Phil show in LA, and Russell Brand was poking fun of me. I met Jim Carrey on the set of Dumb and Dumber 2, and later, I interviewed his sister here in Toronto. Truman Show? Truman Show, uh, um, good morning, good noon, and good night. Uh, that was my dad. If I don't see you later, good yeah. afternoon, good evening, and good night. Yes, he was, was he was the nice guy, the, the guy that everybody loved. Unbelievable. So Jim put, Something from all of us in every movie. I knew there was an audience and a career on YouTube, but I needed to do it for myself. That's when I turned that Jim Carrey screenplay into a before their famous video. The first one ever. 
Jim Carrey has established himself as one of the biggest names in Hollywood, but before taking over Tinseltown, Jim came from very humble beginnings. He left school at 16, he was homeless for a short period of time, and his first time on stage resulted in booze and a giant hook pulling him off stage. Welcome to Before They Were Famous, I'm Michael McCrudden. And the rest of the story? Well, you know the story because it all played out here on Before They Were Famous. And you guys, you've all been a part of this journey. I've been in front of many big companies and big players, but didn't get the break until I found you and you found me. So thank you once again. And the rest of the story, well you know the story, or you can find it elsewhere because this is Before They Were Famous, I'm Michael McCrudden, thanks a lot. Alright to you then. So we finally done my own Before They Were Famous. There's a lot of people I didn't get to thank in this video, my brother-in-law David Murphy. Also I'd like to thank Todd Shapiro and the boys of that show at SiriusXM because they really helped me along the way. Also the other team members, we got Mateo, we got Kevil, we got Aylin, we got Jessica. Uh, Amber Smith, she did a lot of great stuff with us at McCrudden Entertainment. And uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to McCrudden Entertainment, we're putting all our other shows in one place. Because we made a bunch of shows and then it got a little complicated, so we decided we would simplify things and put them all in one place. So right now, go over to McCrudden Entertainment and subscribe, because if you stayed around this long, you must really like me. Because that was a long video. I'm sweating my balls off. Alright guys, I'll see you in another video. As always, let us know who you want to hear about next. Perhaps it will be Azzy, because she's blowing up. And uh, we all love her. Alright, I'll see you guys in another video. I heard your brother practically jumped on the bed. That's kind of taken it a bit too far. Beep. Johnny, naughty. Johnny. <laughs> Gary, nice. <laughs>